Good evening. And uh, here's uh, me, Dr. Talugar, presenting a case. Well, the, he's an 82 years old male who had angina on exertion culminating in recent ACS, impending shock, written elsewhere. He had a sky high troponin with uh, hemoglobin of uh, slightly higher side, creatinine 1.6, euglycemic. ECG showed left excess deviation and anterior depression and anterior leads. Echo showed LV dysfunction with no MR. The chest x ray showed PVH clinically stable for past seven days. BP was 110 by 70. COVID 19 was positive. CT value 19. HRCT was 40% lung involvement. Resting SPO2 being 92. Well, the right side looked okay. And on the left side, we see uh, almost from the distal left main, it is a critical LED and circumflex disease. We decided to stent it using two, uh, two stand strategy because the circumflex lesion was quite significant. Both the lesions were crossed with a workhorse BMW VAD and the lesion in the LCX being more critical was pre-dilated with 2.50 into 12 mm balloon at 10 atmosphere pressure. Subsequently, the LED lesion was uh, pre-dilated with uh, the same balloon and uh, we decided to, uh, after the, this thing, to dilate, uh, go for the B stenting because there was a renal dysfunction, patient was COVID positive, we want to conserve the dye and do the procedure quite significantly. We placed two stents. 3.5 into 28 mm and uh, in the LED and 3 into 26 mm in the uh, circumflex with uh, matching covering the lesion and uh, with uh, taking care not to go deep inside the left main. Once we correct, uh, put the stents, we deployed the stents simultaneously at nominal atmosphere pressure going 2 millimeter high, that is for Yukon stent, it was 11 and we went to 13 and 14 atmosphere pressure respectively. Subsequently, after the stent, we had good result. There was a distal uh, circumflex lesion, we, which we decided not to uh, do much about it. And then we post dilated the circumflex stent with 3.5 uh, into 8 mm balloon at 14 to 16 atmosphere pressure. Then, then we went to the post dilation of the LED stent with 4O into 8 millimeter balloon and we went uh, uh, keeping the circumflex balloon at the position with an intention to perform the last section V stenting and uh, LED stent we post dilated at 16 atmosphere pressure. Then we went for the kissing kind of a proximal optimization or whatever for the both the stents at moderate to high pressure, going up to 16 to 18 atmosphere pressure. We took care so that balloon overhangs doesn't uh, come into the LED, uh, left main. And uh, we had used the stand boost technology to the uh, fuller extent to this. Here is the post dilation and the final step. After post dilation, we could see decent result. And we decided to go for uh, other imaging technologies. This is the final result. Of course, there, the distal circumflex is not looking too good, but it was a stable lesion and we decided to leave it. By, by now, we had used around 80 ml of dye. So we decided not to uh, put too much of dye further. And this is the OCT run. The OCT run was decent enough, showed well opposed tent. This is a 3D recon image of the OCT run. In the terminal part of the stent, there was some mellow position. As you can see, three studs overhanging. So that we optimized with a 4 o balloon. And uh, this is an uh, OCT run from the LED to the left main. Basic thing was to see if, if we miss the left main. Here in the terminal portion, we can see one, one stretch covering and there was no injury to the left main. So we thought that we had done a uh, good enough job. And to conclude, distal left main remains one of the holy grails of intervention. Planning, 
details, hardware selection, guide control is of human importance. Backup mechanical support might help. V-stenting is still relevant in some cases. Imaging by OCT and IVAS use is imperative. On six months follow-up, the patient had no angina and exertion. In fact, creatinine has become better. Hemoglobin has been raised. Creatinine perhaps have become better because its cardiac output by its uh, improved. The ECG showed minimal ST sagging, which remains a uh, legacy of his uh, myocardial insult. Eco had involved improvement. Clinically, he has improved much. He actually walked into the OPD. The LV ID or LV internal diameter is smaller. The or uh, he has been put on SPD, uh, DAPT, aspirin plus with high dose of rosuvastatin, metoprolol of 50 milligram twice daily, and proton pump inhibitor. Of course, because of his COVID status, we had also given him epixaban, 5 milligram twice daily for a month, uh, six weeks, and uh, some amount of uh, steroids. So there are a lot of uh, discussion in these uh, cases whether we should have go, gone for a more complicated strategy. In overall, we used a total of 120 ml of dye, which includes uh, two OCT runs. So we wanted to conserve the dye. We wanted to do it fast. We wanted to do it more dexterously. And hence, we selected the V stenting technique. Point has to be made that V stenting is still relevant in some cases, especially when we want to do cases well. But yes, challenge remains. Sometimes we have an uh, uh, we have a uh, disadvantage of uh, you know uh, injuring the left main, or if we miss the ostia, or if we come too near into the left main, when then it becomes a kind of S case, putting uh, problems in a later stuff. But here in this case, as seen in the uh, OCT image, we showed that there was only one or two millimeters uh, connect between the two, making it a perfect fit. I think in this case, it was, uh, it was our quick thought which helped us. But I remain to be enlightened by the, uh, uh, the, by the learned faculty. If we could have done the case anyway, in a different way or maybe whatever possible could have been done, especially in these COVID times. Thank you for your attention. Dr. Talib, I have something. Your, uh, yes, sir. Sir, but I think it is the case only. Though the difference what you are trying to highlight at this pre-stenting, I disagree. It is uh, like a case because you are able to see Something like a trouser in the left main. Uh, only one stunt. Only one stunt. It's a good technique, I agree. But it went out of disfavor because if there is a problem, then uh, a tackling that is going to be a real big problem. Uh, suppose if you had a dissection in the left main, proximally at the stents, then tackling that is going to be a really very uh, big problem. So alternatively, in this kind of situation, maybe a culotte is going to be a very quick technique or a tap technique is the other thing uh, to be considered when you want to do very quickly and get out. Yeah. So, yeah, we are sort of point well taken, but then uh, it was COVID time and uh, I could manage the case with uh, only ATML die uh, end to end and uh, creatinine was 1.6, 1.7 kinds. So, uh, the main thing, and I uh, finished the entire procedure in 35 minutes. So, the one was time because of the COVID. The second was the uh, the die part, and I wanted to come out early. But yes, sir, that 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 point what you told about the dissection in the left main is of uh, very big concern. Uh, so I was meticulous about the OCT one, uh, and on that day I was would have been better. I thought. But uh, I had to do with the OCT because OCT machine was available, the IVAS machine was somewhere else. I wanted to do everything in very short period of time. And especially the COVID, the highlight point is, sir, many a times, in, especially in COVID area, we are, we are actually 
learning new things and uh, some rather uh, putting some uh, innovations to uh, shorten the procedure and you know lessen our exposure all this stuff so that was the point to make uh, this was a covid negative patient isn't it was it covid positive patient yeah 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 covid positive right uh, then uh, uh, i fully agree with your point uh, we have to minimize the exposure of the staff as well as the cath lab to an infected person i fully agree uh, actually this v stenting and sks they all went out of favor but in emergency situations when there is a crash especially a left main crash we may have to resort at times to the v stenting and we have seen cases at the follow up uh, where the v stenting with uh, uh, was uh, uh, going on without issues and here you could optimize what whatever optimization is possible you could do i am uh, in fact yes. a little bit afraid of re entering the stents in a v stent pre uh, when we were doing dm uh, or uh, the early part of the practice uh, we were taught that uh, it's always better to avoid re entering the stents in a v stenting do it perfectly well v stenting dilate it well if possible with a second shell dilatation first you go with one stent lower atmosphere other stent maximum the next again uh, the other stent lower atmosphere maximum then final kiss with a moderate pressure and get out that is what we have been taught about the v stenting but here you could go in post dilate then did the uh, imaging and all good and uh, you could get a better result and a follow up at 6 months the patient is doing well hope he should continue to do well for a long period of time congrats thank you thank you sir thank you for the encouragement and uh, uh, nagul sir what is your you, you might have done like a, a good number of cases of v stenting during that era where we used to do v stenting so i personally think you practically always end up with the sks thing sks because unless you deploy the imaging you can't be really sure that uh, something is sticking back in the left main or not actually so, there is only a thin margin between <laughs> these two things SK very very and fine US. line so i mean let's accept that that there are situations where you need to do it very very quickly the patient is crashing and uh, you can't do much about it and it's not always a success story you lose many patients we we have to accept that so okay with the th- thanks dr nabji uh, can we